Well, welcome back. Now, I'm Ted Thomas, and I've been involved in an alternative business. It's alternative to the traditional real estate business for some 30 years. Now, this is kind of a subset of the real estate business. Okay, it's called tax liens and tax deeds. Now, this is a very, very small part of the market, which I do from home. I can do this from a small office anywhere in the world with the communications that we have today. And you can do the same thing from your small office. So I'm answering the question, what do you need to start a home business? Well, in this episode, we're going to try to answer that question. Now, the simplest answer is one big word, and that word is you need discipline. And that's the big challenge of working at home. Now, it's interesting to note that the Small Business Administration, that's a government agency that provides loans and advice to small businesses. And they reveal in their information that 60% of all the new jobs come from small business. So I'll be right back and I'll tell you more about that. What do you need to start a home business? Well, you're not alone. There's millions of startups and entrepreneurs working from home. Now, small business is not easy. The risk of failure is very high. Not only are you re risking your own money, but you're also probably risking the money of the people that are investing with you. So this is a big responsibility. You want to do it right and you're going to try as hard as you can, but you have a lot of things working against you. So starting from a small office really can be a big money saver. Obviously, you won't have to worry about the rent factor and paying that. All right. You'll also know that you can do a lot of things with video and you may or may not have employees. So if you did video, you could be using Zoom. If you're going to have employees, you're going to have to think about that because a home office with employees is going to be a bit of a challenge. Why? Because you need a separate space for them for facilities for them to use and whatever. My, my point is you don't want them using your kitchens and bathrooms and things like that. So doing that with employees from home is going to be very difficult. You're probably going to have to have an office if you do have employees. Now, money is also a problem and it's a challenge for a small business. Why? Because people don't raise enough money when they start up. So you need to have reserve. So think about that. So what do you need when you start that business? You better have some reserves because you don't know when you're going to make that first sale. So I mentioned earlier that there's no rent to pay. Well, there's also no commute. Now that gives you a lot more time to be productive. So many people commute 30 minutes to an hour every day, each way to work and back home. And so that takes up a lot of time. You'll be able to use that same time to be a lot more productive. And that's why people like to work at home. They want to be more productive or they might want to just sleep late uh, because they can start late. It's going to be up to you. All right. Now, if you don't have an automobile, guess what? That's great. No wear and tear to worry about. No gasoline to buy, especially at the new gasoline prices since we have a new president. Obviously, you need a comfortable place to work and you need somewhat of a sanctuary where it's quiet and people aren't going to be bothering you. All right. Now, you need to think about this because you don't want kids playing basketball in the next, next room and you don't want your neighbors to be able to walk in and interrupt you. You need a quiet place to work. I don't talk about much about what your chair has to be like, what your desk, what your computer. You, uh, I've already figured all that stuff out before I came along. Now, discipline is the big problem. Now, you probably have a family and where do they like to be? They like to be with you. They like to be around you, talk with you, visit with you, do whatever. Now, that's not going to work if you're going to be a home business person. Why? Because who's going to generate the new business? Who's going to generate the much needed money that you need to pay the bills? Okay, so you need a sanctuary and a special place to work. Now, success usually comes from being a specialist and mastering at least one craft, or you already have a profession. If you don't have either of those two things, well, the business I'm in, you can copycat it. But you need to have something that you're different from everybody else. Now, when you're in business, you have to be helping people. Your, your whole attitude has to be, what are you going to do for other people? And believe me, if you can solve their problems, you're going to have a good business. All right. So you have to understand that your success or your failure comes to you based directly on how well you engage yourself with your customers. Now, if you don't engage with the customers, you're not going to have a good business. It's going to be up to you. They're going to buy and they're going to sell 
as the result of your actions. So when you get to your office, you need to focus. You're going to have to concentrate and take my word for it. You're going to need determination and you're going to need a lot of discipline. This is the toughest part of working at home. Not, to, not even to mention that you can go in the kitchen and eat every time you want. When you go home to work, you're going to have to concentrate, you're going to have to focus, and you're going to have to have an awful lot of discipline. Now look, I'm not a pessimist, but I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's not easy to work at home. Most businesses are very convenient for people at home, but there's a lot of issues that are problematic. The internet itself is problematic because it's very easy to get captured and use up time on YouTube, use up time searching things on the internet. That's a huge time vampire. All right, interruptions are your fault. The interruptions are caused because you're not assertive and you're not disciplined. You're going to have to be that. All right, so can you handle working at home? No social interactions? Okay, these are all big things that make that people fail. Now, the secret to the home business is pretty simple. You're going to have to focus five, seven, eight hours a day. You're going to have to schedule yourself to start at certain times and finish at certain times. All right. People ask me, what do you need to start a home business? The biggest thing you need is discipline. Next thing you're going to need is money. How much money do you have? All right. If you don't have money to take care of your family, you better not start that home business. You need to make sure that you've got reserves and the reserves are never enough. I can tell you that right now. You're going to need a lot more than you think you are. All right. If you don't have a problem solving product, what are you going into business for? Why are you going into business unless you can solve someone else's problem? Now, my students, they change what they do. So they come to me and they learn how to do it. I've had students, they commute from their bedroom to what was their dining room. Now, why did they do that? Well, they move their dining room table out because the kids are all either off to school or off leading adult lives. And they make that into a, a little area that's going to be a quiet office while one person actually goes to an office and the other person stays home and makes that their home office. All right. Now, if the kids are gone, that's going to be easy. If the kids are there, that's not going to happen. You need to have what I call a sanctuary, a quiet place where you have your own telephones, your own paperwork, your own silent area, and there isn't a lot of basketball games going or TV games or anything else going on. So I've conducted a business for home from home for over 30 years. And I do that from a special room. Is it a mess? Yes. Are there plenty of telephones? Is there extra space? Yes, but it's not neat and tidy. But I have a great view of the outside. And there's lots of light. And that's why I prefer to work. And I can get more work done in two hours in that sanctuary than I can in a regular office in a whole day. Why? Because there's no one there that bothers me. All right. All the interruptions are your fault. You're not being assertive. You're not being disciplined. That's your time. If you don't generate the money, who is going to generate the money? What do you need to start a home business? A ton of discipline, a ton of concentration, and you're going to need money. Now, I hope you're getting the idea. No, I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not saying you're going to live that internet lifestyle of going to the beach and carrying your computer down there every day. That's a different life that I don't know about. When you get a home business, you're going to work, but you can be very productive because you don't have to commute and you don't, you don't have to spend a lot of money on rent. All right. So I'm answering your question. What do you need to start that home business? My business like yours is unusual. Every business is a little bit unusual. All right. In the old days, what I did was very inefficient. I buy tax defaulted properties and I resell them. It's a simple business. I buy it low. I sell it low. I'll tell you more about it in a minute. But the point is, can I always buy one in my own community? No. Sometimes there's a better deal in the next state. Well, in the old days, I had to get in a car, drive to the airport, fly to the old state, get in a car, go look at it. All right. Now I can do 90% of that. I can do it online. I can do everything I want online. All right. Ultimately, I will look at the property. But the point is, I can use the satellites. I can use the Wi-Fi for communication. I can, I can do evaluations. I can do research. In other words, it's a much more efficient business. All right. All of that changed over the past 10 years, but it also changed for the products I could. So in the old days, I had to have a big room with store all the books, store all the C CDs and DVDs because that's what they want. Now we deliver all that on the internet. So that all changed. All right. Was it expensive to make those changes? Yes. But is it more convenient? Much more convenient. All right, much more and everything works faster and it's much easier to be in business. So from my home office, I can deliver my products 
and my services. For example, I can deliver a book, I can deliver a DVD, or I can deliver coaching, which is a service, or mentoring. I can do all of that, or I can do all, or I can talk with people on Zoom all day long. You're getting the idea. So what do you need? You just need the electronic com communications in a certain place, and you need the discipline not to just sit there and wait for business to come to you. You must engage with the public. If you don't engage, you're not going to be you're not going to be able to stay in that business. All right, you can copycat exactly what I've done and what have I done? Well, nationwide, thousands of property owners don't pay their taxes. So what happens? The legislature mandates the county and makes them levy taxes, collect taxes, and if they can't, well, what they do is they confiscate those properties. Then they put them up to sale. When they sell the properties, they sell at auction. The discounts are 60%, 70%, When they sell at auction, there's no mortgage. They delete the mortgage and the deed of trust loan. In other words, it's canceled. So anybody can buy at those auctions. Some of them are online, some of them are offline. This is done in all 3,000 counties in all 50 states. All right, now, unpaid properties, they have a consequence. What's the consequence? The consequence is if you own a property and you don't pay the tax, I can assure you right now, the treasurer will confiscate the property and resell it back into the market. Will they give you any of that money? No. They're going to resell that property and whoever buys it could be buying for 10 cents, 20 cents, 30 cents on the dollar because the starting bid is only 10 to 20 cents on the dollar. But before you go, I want to mention, if you're going to buy a property, you want to buy the property at the cheapest price possible. All right, you must see the property. You must have boots on the ground. What does that mean? That means you must see it, not have someone else see it, but if you have a trusted source, well, you can have them look at it. But you don't want to buy a property from a picture or an internet uh, uh, overview of it. You need to have boots on the ground. Why? There could have been a fire. There could have been a hurricane. There could have been a windstorm. It might be next to a chicken farm. I don't know what could be wrong with that property, but there might be a lot of things wrong, but with your own eyes, you can see that. So you want boots on the ground. That was number one. Number two, you want to be very careful at auction that you don't get it in a bidding war and you keep bidding up. You want to always have an exit strategy. What does that mean? That means you want to know what you're going to sell it for before you buy it. Know what your sales price is before you buy it. Why? So that you won't bid up and you'll have plenty of room for margin. We're trying to buy at 10 and 20 cents on the dollar, maybe sell for 50 or 60 cents on the dollar and make money quickly. I'm Ted Thomas. I'll see you in the next video.